Hey everybody, Lawrence here at Dirty Basement Terrain. A while ago, I made some columns. So, these. I made a lot of them, but I wanted to make... Well, I do really do like these. I wanted to make a beefier version of this column. They, you know, just look more heavy duty. And not so delicate. So, I made these. As you can see, they are thicker and look beefier. I, I don't know why I just wanted to do it. So I'm going to walk you through the process of how I made these. And, but I, I will warn you, I did make extensive use of my Proxon hot wire cutter, but it is possible to do a lot of this by hand, but it will with blades and stuff, but it, it with some difficulty, but it can be done. But I have a Proxon, so I, a hot wire cutter, so I'm just going to be using that. Hope you enjoy the process and remember just because this is how I'm going to do it, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it the exact way. Hope you enjoy. Okay, I need to start trimming down my chunk of foam to more manageable strips, so I measured out an inch and a half because the biggest piece I'm going to be using is an inch and a half. So to cut it down an inch and a half strips will just make it much more manageable and easy to use. Of course now I'm going to adjust the guider to an inch because I'm going to be needing a lot of inch, in, one inch by one inch blocks. So like I said just adjust the pro to the guider to an inch and just start cutting a bunch out. Now that I've got the pieces trimmed, I'm going to be just cutting them out, assembly line style. Now I have to adjust for the next set of blocks I want to make, which are going to be one and a half inches by one and a half inches by one and a half inches, basically one and a half inch cubes. Because I'm going to need for this project at least 12 of those. For but it's a, I'll cut more than I need, but it's just a matter of cutting out at least 12. And here I'm cutting some strips that are one and three quarter inches wide because I need to make some squares that are one and three quarter inches by one and three quarter inches for the bottoms and what will eventually be part of the tops of the columns. Now that I've got the squares cut, I need to adjust it to a half inch thickness. These are just my measurements, but I want the bases to be a half inch thick. So again, I'm cutting it up to what I need. And I'm going to need at least 12 of these, though I think I cut a lot more than I need eventually. Here we're going to do texturing foil ball. No, we're going to do a rock tumbler, which is basically a bunch of random stones from like a driveway or whatnot into a plastic container put your foam in and just start shaking 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 this will give it texture and dump it out you're gonna have a lot of dust and dust with this that's disadvantage with this it's dirty but that's why you put some paper down so it catch all the dirt and you can see how it works it, it does good texturing and here I've got a one inch by one inch strip. Then I'm going to check against the base that I made. Just to make sure it's thin enough to fit on there comfortably. And it is. It'll make sense later. 
So I'm going to adjust my guider to 3 8 inch thick and just cut out a bunch of squares. I'm going to need them for spacers and for the caps on top of the columns. And here I'm adjusting the wire on my Proxon to give my e a 50 degree angled cut. I just prefer that angle, that's all. For that reason, for that. I want to give these columns some visual interest for aesthetic reasons. Because, let's face it, different shaped blocks is boring. If you just stack them like that. So, give it some visual appeal to look nice on the table. In the bases, I'm just trimming the top half. And I'm going to be doing that for all six bases. Now for the top stones, I'm going to be doing the same thing and trimming at a 50 degree angle, but then I'm going to flip them over and trim it again so there's an angle on both sides. And here I'm just grabbing the 1 inch 1 inch squares and I'm going to be giving it the same 50 degree angle cut. These are going to be the cap stones which are on the very top of the columns. I'm going to put these on just for some visual, in visual interest. And aesthetics again so it looks nice on the table than it would without these now I'm assembling because I've gotten all the different size pieces into their respective piles and I just want to start putting them together I'm using Aileen's tacky glue because it will the PVA will give you work time to adjust pieces if you need to and you will honestly because some may be a little crooked so if you turn it around it won't be as crooked but I like using the aliens like I said for the extra work time and I'm just starting from the bottom and working up one one column at a time of course you can actually assemble from the bottom going up and you can get the top pieces at the same time and work from the top and work your way down and then glue the two halves together which I eventually do do <laughs> but again this is just an assembly line assembly I mean there's nothing really fancy about this other than gluing together I would like to note that all pieces did go through the rock tumbling to get texture I just didn't really think you guys needed to see me tumble every single little piece And of course I'm going with the standard black Mod Podge for the foam. You've seen me do it in a lot of builds and you're going to see me do it here. This is just to give it a black base coat and the Mod Podge does give it a little extra strength because, let's face it, they're going to get bumped around. So any little extra help to protect your the work you've just put in is a very good thing.
And here I'm going to go with my I go to base coat color of Apple Barrel's dark blue gray. It, it's my choice for stone work. And I just I, I like the blue better than regular dark grays because I don't know it just it gives it something a little extra I think. And here I'm going to be adding some streaks of color to the stone just because stone isn't just gray, as I preach a lot. <laughs> I'm going to be using Deco Arts Rookwood Red, Deco Arts True Ochre, and Apple Barrel Kelly Green. And I said just small little streaks, not not a not like a whole overbearing amount, but enough to give it some visual interest, which won't really be seen too well but it will be there and of course here I'm gonna be adding my go-to standard for a mid-tone gray of Apple Barrel's pewter gray it I'm just going for like my normal 80 to 85 percent coverage I don't want hundred percent I want to leave the dark recesses and whatnot the base color pretty simple just it's a, an overbrush of the pewter gray and of course here I'm gonna be going with the highlight dry brush of apple barrels granite gray it's a light gray yep any light gray will do if you want and I'm using a makeup brush just basically I want to highlight the edges and get a nice light coat nice light dry brush on to this to make it look pretty and here I'm going with my go-to dark brown wash because as my usual, I think stonework should be dirty and nasty. I mean, this isn't the high courts of some elven kingdom I'm making stuff for. So, I wanted to have a dirt, a nasty look to it. And I think the dark brown does just as well as shadowing the dark recesses, the deep recesses as a black wash. So, I use brown. Of course, now that the wash is dry, I'm going to be giving it another dry brush with the granite gray, working from the top down, like light it the way light would hit. And this is just to bring up the highlights again, while still leaving that brown, dirty, nasty look to it. This is just what I like to do. And now I'm going to be adding some pigment powder to the columns, or scrape pastel chalk I like to use the uh, dark brown mix just to get some more dirt and shadows to it and just make it look a little more grungy I do not go for a pr pristine clean brand new look for my stonework I like going for dirty and nasty <laughs> because a lot of times we'll have stuff like this in dungeons and whatnot and let's face it I think I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's no maid service in a dungeon, so stuff's going to be dirty. Here I'm using some IPA or isopropyl alcohol, or rubbing alcohol, whatever you want to call it. The spray down where I put all the pigment powder to lock it in place so it doesn't rub off. And here I want to add some moss, if for no other reason, for some visual interest to give it a little bit of extra color other than gray and brown. This, honestly, for me, is, at, is a purely aesthetic reason to put it on. 
And here they are with everything all nice and dry. I hope you enjoy them. Hey everyone, if you made it this far, it means you watch it again. And as always, I really do appreciate that. If you like the video, hit like. If you want to see more, click subscribe. If you want to leave a comment, leave a comment down below or off the side. I never know where it is. In the comment section, if you want to get a hold of me directly, uh, you can with through my Discord page. There's a link to that in the About tab of the DBT page. Uh, if you need have questions or need advice about something, that's a great place to go. There's lots of crackers there. If I can't or don't answer your questions, somebody there will. So, a good place to go. Um, just remember, everybody, uh, when you're making your terrain, the only person you got to worry about is you, because it's your terrain.